Today, we're going to be checking out what's going on with the OpenZFS bug, who this impacts, why this has come about, some of the steps that you can take to mitigate this. We're also going to look at which distros are impacted. And I think this is actually something that is pretty serious. So we have the possibility of silent data corruption. And if you're not aware, that means that your data, which is typically checksummed and validated in a ZFS-based environment, is essentially still subject to this. That means the checksumming would not detect the data corruption because of the manner that this is actually happening in. And it does look like most all of the modern ZFSs that have been released in most of the recent history of most of these distros are impacted by this. So we're going to take a look at who is impacted, what you can do, and we're also going to take a look at my steps that I'm going to be taking because I'm about to upgrade servers to a much larger server for my business data storage. And these enterprise 4 terabyte WD Black drives are great. They have worked for me just perfectly for a really long time. But being at about 10 years old, it's definitely time for me to consider updating them. The real reason that I'm upgrading, though, is because keeping my utilization at 50% in my ZFS environment is something I aim for. And when I look at the capabilities of growing, I don't have that much additional space left. And I've got eight terabytes of data that I need to move over, and that would push my utilization over 50%. So the R720XD will be a great choice for that because that is 12 10 terabyte drives that we're going to be setting up in a high performance array. And I needed to make sure that all of that data is safe and secure. And I hope to gosh that I have not impacted myself, but I'm going to talk about some of those things that make me feel like I'm probably okay because I don't fit quite into the MO of somebody who would have data corruption for my stored data. However, for some of the stuff that I've done in Proxmox, I'm a little more concerned. My VM's integrity, as a matter of fact, is something that I'm keeping an open eye on. Let's get started. And we can see that Mr. Taron Jokes here on GitHub submitted this issue, and this was able to be reproduced by several people that noted that when they had updated to ZFS 2.2.0 on a Linux kernel 6.5.11, and they also had a core utils update to 9.3, which was automatically using reflink from the 8.32 branch, that there was uh, data being corrupted, unfortunately, silently inside the files while they were trying to run some compilers. And this is the core root of the problem that we were seeing. Now, again, this use case that they were using it for was compilation of code, it looks like. This does have bigger implications as the ability to detect the errors is something that ZFS needs to have for data integrity. And as we can see here, ZFS does not see any errors on that pool. So data that is in flight can have zeros included in it. Compressed data, which ZFS compresses, of course, some of the data that is being stored uh, within a various type of formats, can have zeros written in it as padding. Now, if this is happening really fast on a system that is very slow on the I.O. side, but really fast on the compute side, then a flush transaction may not be able to execute in time. And that can lead to a dirty D node not being recognized and flushed properly to the disk. So essentially, the read operation is filled with zeros. And when you go back to write it, that's unfortunately when you would suffer from data corruption. So this is mainly for people that are reading and writing intensely to a local hosted ZFS. This is not something that is impacting people apparently that are using ZFS backed storage over NFS or Samba. So it does appear that this is for locally hosted ZFS calls, and that is where the problem resides. So this can cause that undetected data corruption. Now that's of course dangerous because that means your backups could also have corrupted data. So the reality is this is actually a pretty hard bug to hit unless you're using synthetic benchmarking tools like the reproducer script, or if you're doing something on a local ZFS file system, like copying a ton of information, reading, writing, reading, writing, reading, writing, there you could actually run into this problem, especially if you have those slow IO subsystems, which not necessarily super common these days. But if you're looking at something like compiling code, that's where you might be able to introduce problems. 
that could be a big problem because certain operating systems have been allowing ZFS as their root uh, file system for a while now. A lot of concern probably around Unraid and TrueNAS. However, in my opinion, most people are using those as network back file shares and not necessarily running tons of local jails on them. And so the risk is kind of lower. Now, running apps, especially on things like Unraid, is pretty popular. Unraid already has come out and patched this and released this. So we're going to go over the versions that are impacted. Taking a look here at Unraid 6.12.6, this was released December 1st, and this does uh, include a fix for the OpenZFS to patch it up to the release version. That is the 2.2.2 release. And we can see that the ZFS 2.2.2 release does address the data corruption issue as well. The ZFS 2.1.14 release addresses the data corruption issue as well. And both of those will be in different various versions and operating systems, depending upon which one of those they are on. So you can also see that they have included that in 6.12.6. .6. So if you are on prior to 6.12.6, .6, and utilizing ZFS, then you probably should very strongly consider upgrading right now. Now, the TrueNAS forms uh, were one of the places that I have caught up to the most information on this. Excellent information there. Link to that in the description below. And this is a place where you can see what the current status is, some of the testing that's going on. Now, TrueNAS Scale has not released an update yet that addresses this. You can see the version here of TrueNAS Scale that we're on right now, 23 Point ten point zero point one. This will be addressed in the 23.10.1 branch, which is due to be out in about four days now. And it is currently December 8th, 2023. So December 12th, 2023, we should have that released TrueNAS scale version. However, this does appear to be already updated in TrueNAS core. So TrueNAS core 13.0 hyphen U 6.1 does address the updated patched version of ZFS. So some of the things that you can read, all of this in the links below will be down in the description. So go check that out and you will be able to get all of this information and get up to speed yourself, do your own assessment on this. But we do have a couple more days to wait for the TrueNAS scale update to happen if you are using Ubuntu, in my opinion, or Proxmox. Those are probably the two highest risk areas for data corruption to have occurred on your system if you're using ZFS. And so the current state of Ubuntu in addressing this is that they have a fix committed for Noble, and that releases the 24 release, which is not really going to be out for quite some time. It's probably in testing, but that one's not going to be out for some, some time. Mantic is one of their current releases that if we check here on their release schedule, you can see Mantic is a 23.10. It has a very short support cycle. So only until 2024. Uh, you don't want to go out and install that. In my opinion, it's just not a long support window on that. Now, if you look at 22, this is where a lot of people probably are, and this is where I think a lot of people probably should be. This is a long-term support release. And if we go back to the bug tracker here, we can see that we are not there on Jammy being updated yet. You can see the importance ranking is high here on this. So it does look like they have a fix committed for 24, and it is in progress for 23, probably working their way backwards. And hopefully we see a Jammy fix coming soon that gets the 2.2.2 or 2.1.14 backport patched in to the ZFS repos so that you can update your systems and be immune to this. Now, there's also quite a bit of information that I dug up on different mailing lists. And also, if you're interested in that, check that in the link below. A lot more details about what's going on, how people are testing this, what their mitigation strategies are, could be impactful, especially if there's data corruption that's occurred probably not a ton of use cases that normal users with a NAS setup are going to have ran into if you are just using it for network access. This one, however, is probably the biggest concern that I have, and that is Proxmox right now with uh, version 8.1. And it appears that the most recent comment that I could find easily uh, with some searching on the Proxmox forms is that they did know of and attempt to patch it yet. However, they did come back in that same comment and say there could be one or more pre-existing issues that are just more easy to trigger with block cloning enabled. And they warn people to go ahead and set some system tunables so that you can disable block cloning. So it 
may or may not be uh, totally fixed in the Proxmox distribution. This is what leads me to a lot of caution about what is happening right now with Proxmox in particular. So this is a, a concern point. If you are have just installed, and it looks like this was released November 2023, 20, very recently here. Uh, and I know that I was just installing a Proxmox the other day, and I thought to myself, oh yeah, that's right, the ZFS bug. Definitely something needs to happen there. So uh, do make sure that you are aware of this, especially if you're using ZFS as a uh, volume for storing VMs or if you're doing any sort of code compiling on your Proxmox instance. So those are the overview of some of the high level operating systems that I think are probably going to impact the vast majority of users that are members of this channel. Certainly share this out there. That helps uh, get the awareness of this out there for other people. So do share this out there so that other people can be up to date on it. And all of these notes in the description below. But TrueNAS scale users 23.10.0.1 and prior uh, that have been using local apps or jails, you probably uh, could be impacted depending upon the speed of your system and whether or not you actually hit one of these uh, thresholds to incur data loss is going to be pretty hard to determine post hoc here. That's what I keep seeing is that unless you have some really old backups or other backups of your file system, that's going to be pretty hard to determine whether or not you were impacted. TrueNAS core users, if you're on 13.0 hyphen U 6.0 and prior, you could be impacted. Open ZFS versions prior to 2.2.2 or 2.1.14 are the impacted versions. From what I can tell, all Proxmox versions are impacted that have ZFS, and that I believe is almost all of the Proxmox versions out there that are even slightly modern. So that is a lot of operating systems out there and distros that are impacted by this. So do get onto and check your forms of your favorite distros like Arch or Ubuntu or whatever it might be out there and find out where the status of the ZFS patching is. And let me know in the comments below so that other people can find out as well. What can you do about it? First off, it's still, in my opinion, very unlikely that it's impacting you. And there are mitigations that do exist. And I'm going to link you those in the description below. But you can run some syscontrol stuff at startup. You can put that as a conf file in your boot folder and it'll get kicked off at load time. That probably is one of the best things that you can do. And it looks like turning off the DMU offset next sync to essentially setting that as zero is the best fix out there for this currently if you have a system that is impacted by this. This does appear to impact almost everything, and it's only in recent time that we saw some of the tooling come out for core utils that we are really seeing this manifest. Certainly, if you are looking at things like block file copying, which is going to be awesome, uh, then that's probably one of the things you want to avoid as well right now. What do you do? Lots of questions. Lots of questions around that, especially if your backups could be corrupted themselves. That part of it is a real big bummer because you do everything you're supposed to, you keep backups, and yet the file system that you've been using could have been introducing some corruption into them. However, it's a pretty recent narrow window of time where it looks like most of that has been occurring. So hopefully you've got some historical backups that you would be able to run some checksums against and compare with your local checksums currently on your same files and see if there is actually data corruption that has occurred. So for myself right now, I am stopping systems that have been running on ZFS that have been deployed recently, which is unfortunately a decent amount of them. I am also isolating files and trying to locate backups so I can do checksumming, but I do think there is a limited time window. So I am only going back to October to look for this. I believe that there is a strong probability that the update to core utils is what triggered most of these problems for most users. Also, most of the things I have are not data that is super important. So some of that is easily able to be replaced. I don't care about that data and recreating it isn't huge. A lot of the data I keep locally on my machines as I'm editing and working on work files and projects. So I have that data that's able to be restored as well. Again, planning on using TrueNAS Core as it's completely patched up now, and it seems like a very safe place to be. Unraid would also be probably one of my options to go to. My main concern is actually around my VMs, which 
not necessarily tons and tons of valuable data on those, but there are a few that definitely I don't want to have to go through the process of reconfiguring. And so I hope to not find lots of corrupted files. If you know of a manner to run against a pool, a check so that you can locate and find files or tell if you have incurred corruption, drop that in the comments below. I really need that. Uh, it would take me a lot of time here. Uh, check something things and checking against uh, files is... There's a lot of files create a tremendous amount of data in this household. So unfortunately, there's a tremendous amount of data to check against. Send off. Let me know what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be addressing this. I'm interested to know what your take is on it. Also, ZFS has had a superb reputation and has done an amazing job of keeping my data safe, safer than I think I've ever experienced it in any other file system. But this is definitely something that is causing me a little bit of concern and could be one of the first marks that I have in my book against ZFS.